Hey, Tammy Nichols, thanks for being on Crossroads. Thank you for having me. Now, I understand in Idaho, you're dealing with an issue of medical kidnapping uh, by CPS. Can you explain to us what is medical kidnapping? Well, medical kidnapping is where a child is taken from their family, and usually it's due to some sort of um, medical reason that is either something that the child is experiencing or something that is just presumed is occurring. Wait, presumed? W what does that mean? Uh, well, for the instance that we have currently, the presumption is that the child was uh, uh, malnourished and the parents contend that the child is not malnourished. It's just the way that the baby is and the way that the, the child is digesting food and, and uh, you know, having issues with some, some supplements with milks and other uh, foods and isn't able to process those foods correctly and it's making the child sick. And, uh, and so the child has been exclusively nursed instead because uh, he can handle the, the breast milk much better and process that. And so uh, the child was in the hospital for a little while and, uh, and then he was able to get out and uh, go in for weight checks. Um, and without getting into too much more detail yet, uh, the, the hospital, the doctor at that time, not at the hospital, but at a clinic had decided that, um, it was a case for CPS to, to handle because they felt that the child was, um, malnourished. And so the doctor made an assumption that the child is malnourished, even though there's medical reasons for this, they call it child protective services. Then what happens? Well, in the case that we have going on in Idaho right now, uh, the family uh, was scheduled for a weight check. They'd already been into a couple, is my understanding, previous, uh, previous couple days. And uh, they uh, did not attend this weight check. They wanted to reschedule. Um, I don't know all the details to it because uh, I wasn't there, of course. But um, what happened and what I ended up seeing is a Facebook Live video that came on uh, my Facebook because I am uh, friends with, with one of the parents. And uh, they had the police surrounding them at a gas station. And they were um, being told that uh, their child needed to go to the hospital. And instead of just giving the child up, they were asking questions. Uh, there was uh, some people that were um, handcuffed at that time, including a sibling of the mother, uh, because they thought that the, the uh, sister was the mother and she was not. Uh, and then the next video that I ended up watching that uh, came on was in an ambulance uh, where they were telling the mother that she needed to turn over her baby and they were going to take the baby to the hospital and that she was not allowed to uh, go with them and they were going to take the child into, into custody. Now, I, I understand in Idaho, this is a big case right now regarding medical, uh, medical kidnapping where Child Protective Services or the state can basically take your kid away, as happened recently, as you described, um, you know, based on the assumption of a doctor. This set off a lot of alarm bells for people because they've seen this happen now and they're wondering, well, is this a one-off or is this a common thing? Can they do this to me? What, is it, what does it mean? We've actually had several cases here in Idaho. Um, I actually worked with another parent a few years ago uh, where her child was taken from her. Uh, it was a medical issue again and uh, similar circumstances that this child was already a teenager. Uh, and they went through the whole court process and the child was taken away, put into foster care and the mother had to, uh, prove her innocence. Uh, everything that they charged her with, she was never found guilty of anything. Uh, she was able to get her child back after many, many months, but she is still working on getting all of her name cleared and, and all the legal entanglements handled. Explain this to me. Normally in the U.S., you're, guilt, you're innocent until proven guilty. So you said she had to prove her innocence. Does, is this different in this case? You know, that's what we are finding is that when these cases happen, um, the guilt rests upon the parents to be able to prove themselves innocent. So a CPS or, or just about anyone can make an accusation against parents uh, or against uh, the provider of the child and say uh, that this child is being neglected or abused or, or whatever the case may be. And it seems that the um, intent uh, as far as proving their innocence falls upon the parents, even without them being charged with anything, which is what happened in this, this last case, um, as well with this baby. Uh, there was never any charges brought against the parents that there was any neglect or abuse or anything going on. 
And, uh, and so, yes. And so they have to prove themselves innocent. Wait, so the, the state can take your infant or take your child without any evidence or charges? Yes. Yeah. Just with the presumption. It starts with the presumption. And if they presume that something's happening, then they can, they, they go in and take your child. And that's creating a lot of problems. Um, it's a lot of concern for, for parents. Now, one issue you mentioned too, is that it's anyone can report on it. It's not just child protective services. A lot of people think, well, the police might say something, they pass it to child protective services and then they can, you know, CPS can take your kid, but it can be anybody who reports. Anyone could report. And if CPS makes a visit and um, decides, determines that the child is uh, needing to be taken, then they can they can go ahead and and do that. Now, there are some instances in um, situations that I've seen across the United States where parents have been able to exercise rights uh, that they uh, are, are privy to, that they know about, they know how to handle the situation. And, uh, and I know the first thing that I have heard is that you just don't allow CPS into your home. You just don't allow them in there. Uh, if they come back with a, a warrant or something along those lines, and that makes it a different case. But, um, but yes, that seems to be what's, what's transpiring. So what does it mean then if they take your kid away from you? Do they go into the foster care system? And what, what does the parent do during this time if, if there's no charges or anything like that? So with this last case, uh, the parents did not, once they took the child from the mother, uh, again, the mother was arrested um, and then released, but they didn't know where their child was. They had no clue where the child was. They didn't know how long they had to wait for the hearing. Um, you know, and, and CPS was then at that time, the one in charge, uh, and they were the ones making the decisions on if the parents could visit the child for how long, uh, if they were going to be, um, able to, uh, be, make any decisions or determinations, um, with the child at that time. It seems that it, the parental right aspect is taken away at that moment and it's turned over to CPS. And now you're at the, the discretion of what CPS wants to do and what they're allowing you to do at that time. Now, this seems almost like a different legal system. You know, in, in America, again, you're innocent until proven guilty. Like the Napoleonic system, for example, was guilty till proven innocent. What does the process of proving your innocence look like? Because this is not how things are normally done. It varies. It really, really varies um, from case to case on how far people have to go to be able to prove their innocence. Um, you know, some have been resolved fairly quickly. Some take a long, long time uh, with the mother, with the teenager. Uh, you're talking 18 months roughly and, and maybe even longer now because she's still trying to clear her name. She got her child back, but she's still trying to get her name clear, get all the legal entanglements wrapped up. And, uh, and so she's, she's still doing it. <laughs> 